Prince in Mo City. I just knew if we gave you two sissies enough time that y'all was going to let y'all's true color shine through, baby. I just knew it. Now y'all done got comfortable and y'all done let that Neverland Tinkerbell fairy dust start twinkling up out your ass crack. You got Mo City over here talking about selling dick to a bunch of sissies and Prince over here asking Durelli about his dick appointments. Girl, let's talk about it, baby, because this it's a big deal. Huh. Be who you are for your pride. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> What's up, my babies? Did y'all miss me? Because I missed y'all so much. My name is Big Mouth, and this is my channel. If you have not already, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And if it's your first time here, girl, turn on that post notification bell so you can be alerted when I upload a new video, girl. Let's get into it, baby. Did y'all see the Bad Boys Club? Oh my goodness, I just got through watching it, baby. So y'all know I don't watch nothing when it first come out, but you gotta give it a couple days. You know, let that shit marinate. Check the blog, see if it's even worth watching, you know? <laughs> so once I check the blogs, I heard it was not worth watching, but you know, I'm like, you know what? We ain't really doing nothing else over here, girl. Ain't nothing else on TV right now, girl. Baddies ain't coming on forever. Girl, we don't know when Krishan and Johnson show coming out. What, what day is, uh, uh, you know, when, when that's coming out. So what we got now is just Bad Boys Club. Love and hip hop and a few other shows. So I'm like, okay, girl, I'll go ahead and watch it, girl. I ain't doing nothing else. Baby. See, I don't know what y'all be seeing, but I be seeing a whole bunch of other stuff. So, it might have not been eventful with a bunch of fighting, but girl, there was a lot that happened in this episode. Now, let's talk about that. So, let's start here. As the episode opens up, they uh, arrive at the, you know, they, oh, no, they wasn't at the new house yet. Mm -mm, no, they were still at the old house. Yeah, they were still in Fort Worth. They was at the old house. So, they was at the old house and Durelli ends up coming back. So, when Durelli came back, they fill him in on everything that was going on. You know, Chef D gotta, got, gotta be the, uh, a uh, 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 cheerleader for the group. Oh, uh, Prince, you're not telling the story right. Let me let me tell it right. So you know he running his mouth, telling everything. You know, being the catty ass queen that he is, girl. And I don't know if y'all noticed this, but as soon as Durelli came in, and him and Prince kind of embraced each other in that hood. Now I understand, you know, Prince is very, you know, familiar with the girl. <laughs> and Zurelli is one of the girls. But like I told y'all, me being somebody who has been in a, a fraternity for now almost 10 years, um, historically black Greek letter organization, and I have plenty of straight male friends who I have been around with, who have been around for years, and they know I'm gay. And I, uh, we don't behave like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just some stuff we don't do. So as I go through this episode, I want y'all to keep that in mind. Like, I'm not coming from a place of trying to throw gay allegations on a straight man. I'm just noticing and comparing to my normal life and other people that I've been around and, and just some shit ain't adding up. One plus one not equaling two, so we gonna dig in. So as um Durelli is greeting Prince or Prince is greeting Durelli, I don't know how y'all wanna put it. Girl, they embracing this hug, girl. It was like this little hug. And I was like, okay, all right, girl. I see y'all doing y'all little shit. And then Prince goes on to ask Durelli how was the uh how was the what would he say how was the uh the link up or how was the session or whatever the case is basically asking how was the dick from Durelli's boyfriend <laughs> I'm happy that Relly came back and he was able to go home and take care of what he needed to take care of you know it seemed to be pretty serious but I do know that this nigga also went home to go do some extracurricular activities how was the conjugal visit because you smiling like a motherfucker right now Mm -hmm. Talking about somebody passed away and shit. Oh, did I? I had lost my soul. Like, he was. Oh, took my no, soul. I'm not doing but shit. no, he's I'm a. <laughs> no, listen. <laughs> I don't like ugly Darrell. And he said it with this little sassy attitude like, oh, how was the link up? How was the. Like, girl, me and my straight friends ain't never talked about no dick. No shade, baby, but we ain't never talked about that. I don't take dick, but I damn sure suck it, and I ain't never went back talking to, um, my fraternity brothers, any of my straight homeboys, roommates, or anything like that about dick. It's just disrespectful. And not only that, um, yeah, it just, it don't, it don't, it don't give straight men. So, um, and when I said disrespectful, I was saying if it was the gay person saying it to the straight person, unprovoked. But 
in this scenario, you got Prince just bringing it up out of nowhere. And that was weird to me because no, none of my straight friends have ever came up to me and asked me how was the how was the dick, how was the ass, how was the none of it's weird. It's weird, boo. That was kind of weird. And it was very clocky. And um I'm starting to see a whole lot from Durelli and Prince. Like, we've been seeing a lot over this season, just like with that basketball game that they had when um, Durelli was like, Prince, why you always staring at me like you a vampire? Like, you just always giving me the googly eye uh, staring at me. And Prince said, uh, told Durelli, like, oh, um, you don't even, and, Prince, and Durelli said he got a man. And Prince said, oh, you don't give a fuck about your man. You don't give a fuck about him. I ain't got time for Durell. He can make his jokes all he wants to, because at the end of the day, he know, I know, and God know. <clears throat> I ain't got to say it. But we know, you know. Now, why you be staring at me like you on Twilight or something like a little vampire? <laughs> really, you want me to be staring at you like that? I got a man at home. <laughs> he, you know, right now, he's watching a, my dog. And you don't give a fuck about that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Chris, hold my purse. Suck my dick, man. Oh, 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 don't tell me nothing like that. If you ain't gonna throw me with a good time. <laughs> and all of that. And just a lot of, um, you know, just wordplay, sexual innuendo being thrown back between the two. Now, I do understand that they are friends. However, baby, like I said, I compare the shit to my own life and me and my straight friends ain't never did nothing like that. The only time I do stuff or say stuff or have sexual, you know, little innuendo, uh, innuendos and little little jokes, little inside jokes with my, with my straight friends is when they low-key down low and we about to fuck. Mm-hmm. When I play with dudes like that, when I'm comfortable enough to talk to dudes about my gay activity and what I do in the bedroom and stuff like that, it's usually because they're a down my man. Straight men don't get curious about that kind of shit and they damn sure don't ask or joke about it. No tea, no shade. I'm just saying. Moving on. Um, so after, you know, they get all caught up, Prince and really do their little gay shit. And they all get packed up and I guess they move into the new house. And um, while they was in, the, in that scene, Abra said something that really kind of, it really, uh kind of set a little alarm off in my head. He said he was ready to go home. And the reason why that set an alarm off in my head is because he just uploaded a post on Instagram where he said that the whole time in the bad boy's house was like hell, he just wanted to go home. So I want to know what's going on in, them, in that house or what's going on on the set or how they filming or whatever the case is that's really depressing these cast members to where they don't even like being on there. Like Amber um, even said that the one that, the one that sued Jocelyn and sued Zeus, um, she said that in a recent interview that she felt like it was like being in prison when she was on the set of Jocelyn's Cabaret. So I don't know what's going on. And then Thunder Girl also said that outside of the filming times when they were, when they filmed their scenes, because you know this this is not reality TV, it's very scripted. So outside of the times when they filmed their scenes, you know they were locked in their rooms. So they can't come out of their rooms unless they're filming scenes in the whole, you know, and they only film scenes a small portion of the day. So for the rest of the day, you just locked in your room like a hostage. So, ooh, Zeus, get that together, baby. And this is why we need to bring back real reality shows because if it was a real reality show, y'all wouldn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Y'all wouldn't have to do that. It's really giving. We don't want to pay the production crew to be there 24 hours a day. We don't want to um, pay for all this extra cameras to get set up. We don't want to do our job. So we're going to fake it till we make it. That's kind of what it's giving with Zeus. And I'm kind of tired of that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Stop, stop treating these people like prisoners. Anyway, moving on. So they get on the bus and they piling up and they go all going to Dallas. So, um... Ain't nothing happened on the bus, girl. It was very uneventful. You know, they was just talking about, you know, uh, Jonathan getting a bigger room because it's his birthday, whatever the case was. So, um, nothing really too much happened. So, we just going to skate on right through that. They pull up to the house and they get in. And as they get into the house, girl, uh, they all pick their rooms. Now, upon picking their rooms, Durelli did something that kind of pissed me off. Durelli goes into Durelli picks well he don't he didn't pick this he picked his room last. So who was it? I think it was Carrion and Adonis that he uh basically switched rooms and put their stuff in the same room so they could be sharing a room. He could have a room by himself. And his whole rationale for moving Adonis to Carrion's room and making him share a room was, oh uh I gotta have a I gotta have a bed to myself. I'm an OG, I'm an OG. Durelli, sis, I don't know if anybody has told y'all this. Maybe maybe Zeus ain't gave y'all the details. Like, nah, 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 let me just go ahead and tell you, sis. Bad boys ain't doing that well. You know what I'm saying? This is not bad girls, uh, baddies, baddies, bad west, whatever the fuck y'all want to call it. This ain't that brand, okay? This is a Natalie Nunn production, but it is not baddies, okay? And I think it's a widely known fact that bad boys does not perform as well as baddies. Um... And I think this season particularly has has even 
underperformed. No shade. Because ain't nobody really talking about it outside of the blogs that y'all pay to post about it. So with that being said, Durelli, I just feel like this. This show don't really have enough clout for you to be pulling OG cards. Girl, the show barely on its last leg anyway. Like, girl, it's really not giving that. No shade. Like, girl, and, and you only been here one season, Durelli. Like, we only on the second season. OG. That's why I be telling y'all, like, all of them, all of them, I think he's an EP, no shade. Durelli and Jonathan, I think they both EPs. Um, I don't really, and that's why I said I don't really think y'all should be giving out EP titles to everybody because y'all got people acting like this. Y'all got people acting like Jonathan and acting like Durelli, acting very entitled. And it's real weird because they ain't even, y'all ain't even put in enough time yet. I see if you've been here for three or four seasons, girl, you just, this is the second season, Okay. Jonathan, you had one episode, <laughs> one or two episodes in the last season. You know what I'm saying? Durelli, you, you ain't really do too much last season, but get your ass, you know what I'm saying? Into a bunch of shit that ain't had nothing to do with you and, and beat up some white boys. So at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and squabble with Milan who can't fight at all. So that don't really count. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, y'all haven't really put in enough work for y'all to be walking around here and asking rooms from people, telling people they got to go share rooms because you a boss or you this or you that. Girl... I would have whooped skinny ass, I would have whooped that skinny ass, long ass, goofy looking ass, horse lemur body ass, um, bitch, all up and down that motherfucking hallway, girl. I don't know who the fuck, Adonis, you, you real pussy for that. No shade. I know y'all trying to keep it cute and keep it cordial, but baby, this is the bad boys club. You don't let no bitch annex no room from y'all. Give a fuck how long you been on that show. I would have beat that bitch a little bit, okay? Period. Moving on. So, um, I like, I love you, ready, but girl, you check yourself, check yourself. Um, moving on. After that, they all come downstairs, and um, who was that? Who was that? Oh, no. Okay, Chef D and Durelli go up in Jonathan's room, and they, you know, then looked at all the decorations and stuff, and Chef D just jumping around like he just a kid at a birthday party. It's, oh, my God, my twin. Oh, my God, my twin. Oh, my God. I hope this birthday party is just so, I hope these decorations is perfect so he don't whip my ass. Oh, my God. I just hope that everything goes right today so he'll just think that I'm just a, a, a wonderful person and stay my friend. Uh, I hope that everything goes right today so I could just get that much closer to Jonathan and just you know, maybe I can, you know, uh, uh, rub the, 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 the toe jam from underneath his toenails or something. Lord Jesus, uh, 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 let me kiss some more ass. You know, it's giving really much, really that. I'm just really tired of Chef D. I am. If y'all can't tell by now, I'm tired of Chef Teeth. I'm tired of Chef BBL, Chef Big Medea. I'm tired of his non-cooking, non-doing-nothing ass. Like, this show is supposed to be about, for y'all on y'all ends, it's supposed to be about y'all showing y'all brands. And all you showing us, Chef D, is you're an ass kisser. You're a wannabe down ass bitch. You like, um, y'all's embarrassing. Y'all's embarrassing. And not even just Chef D. A lot of y'all's real corny on this show. Y'all real corny, like, y'all really corny as fuck. Y'all corny. Nobody on this show has their own mind. Nobody on this show has their own personality, their own nothing. Y'all so busy trying to be a part of a group, bitch. Y'all not even realizing that these bitches is, like, not your friends. They not your friends like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all just, ugh. How Abra act, how Mo City act, how Prince act. Like, y'all all act like y'all scared of each other. That's what I, yeah, that's what it feel like. Like, is all of y'all scared of each other? Y'all scared to argue? Y'all scared to get in the confrontation? All of y'all walking around on eggshells and it's making the show real fucking boring. Okay? Chef D, I get it. It's Jonathan's birthday. That's your friend. That's your friend, Big Medea. Okay, Shaq? That's your friend. That's your friend. Okay? Now, moving on. So after they do that, girl, they all go downstairs. And now uh, Chef D tells them, oh, look, oh, my God, my twin is on the way. Everybody go upstairs and hide in his room. We're going to surprise him. Which was actually really cute, though. I liked that. So they all go upstairs and go in Jonathan's room, and they hide. And Jonathan come up there, and they surprise him, and they all throwing cake and shit in the bathroom. And, you know, um, we saw production in the closet. <laughs> look at this shit. Look. <laughs> I want to see y'all room. Yo, come on. So I guess... I guess they don't know how to crop themselves out of a scene. But, um, yeah, I don't, who the fuck is editing this shit? No shade. Who the fuck is editing this show? Uh, so, that was a sidebar. But, yeah, so after that, girl, they all go downstairs and they talking about the party net, the net, for the next day. So, as they're talking about this party, and this is what I wanted to get to, Mo City is just really, I don't know if it's him and Jonathan was taking shots. And, see, that's why they say don't... Don't drink, girl, because the drunk will tell the truth. The drunk, when you drunk, baby, your true colors come out. I don't care what nobody say, baby. The, the drunk will tell the truth and the drunk will show the truth. And as they are talking, and most city and Jonathan is taking shots off this bottle, 
Girl, my city just started getting a little bit flamboyant. And I told y'all, girl, he been acting a little bit suspect in these, these confessionals, girl. He just real, I don't know. It gives pussy boy bottom. It gives trade. It do. My city gets flamboyant. I don't think no dude on this show is masculine or, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of weird to me because this is supposed to be the bad boys club. And while I know that gay men are more entertaining and I'm the one that said that, you know what I'm saying, we need to kind of get, get away from putting a lot of straight men on this show. But if you are going to put a straight man on the show, can we get some real straight men? Because Prince, Mo City, Orlando, and Razby, none of them niggas is straight. I'm going to be real with you, baby. All of them niggas have had a dick in their ass at some point in their life. I'm just, it just is what it is. Okay? Mo City just admitted to selling. Yeah, anyway, Prince, big sissy. Okay? We know you was in a relationship with Bobby Lights, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? We know y'all wasn't friends. Don't know nigga be in no club fighting over, fighting or getting mad because you're talking to a girl if that's just your friend. We know y'all was sucking playing with each other dick and balls. We know it. We know you and Durelli is more than friends, girl. We know you a big ass sissy. Okay? Uh, even when Prince saw Jonathan's bathroom, this bitch talking about some, oh my God, y'all, his bathroom is so sickening. His bathroom is sickening. Girl! How much gay lingo Prince you gonna use? How much How much of our culture are you gonna immerse yourself in before you just admit you, you, you are one? Okay? You walk like, if it walk like a duck, talk like a duck, fuck like a duck, got best friends like a duck, use slang like a duck, bitch, it's a duck! I'm so tired of that, and I'm tired of him, and I'm tired of Mo City. But anyway, back to Mo City. So as him and Jonathan sitting there, girl, he getting all flamboyant, getting all loose and look, lighting the loafers, girl. Then out of nowhere, he started talking about the next day, talking about some, oh, I might charge people, uh, charge people to touch me. I want to sell myself at the party. Oh, I might start selling dick. Y'all ever sold dick before? I want to sell myself tomorrow. <laughs> Not you only know. I want to walk around my shirt off, get a free feel, $5. No. $10. Nick, we charge a hundred a feel. A thousand. I have yeah. 100 people. Two thousand to go home with me. Bitch, two thousand, bitch, two thousand. Nigga, you charge 20,000 to go home. Ew. Let me go, y'all lame. Prince Sorry, yeah, y'all yeah, lame. Y'all yeah, yeah. are lame. Prince so y'all ain't never sold no dick. Twenty five thousand. I said yeah, dick for a thousand. You like a bad boy auction. You said did I suck dick before? I said Absolutely. I ever all... sold some dick. See, you know I can't hear. My bad. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> y'all lame. You was a funny hole. <laughs> Mo City, you are talking to a group of gay men. And if y'all did not peep the whole time he was talking about selling himself and how he was going to sell some dick, he was looking at Prince. I don't know what the fuck that was about, but I see air motherfucking thing. And he was definitely looking at Prince. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It was just weird. It was a weird set. So, I think, girl, was that it? Yeah, girl, that was pretty much it. I don't even, that was it. That was all that really happened. And they, and yeah, yeah, that was pretty much it. That was pretty much the end of the episode. Ain't nothing really too eventful happened after that. But that's all, y'all. That was what, really what happened on the show. But I just don't, I don't know. I don't know about these straight niggas. You know what I'm saying? You got Razby over here, you know, getting pounded out by Chris Stokes and the whole cast of B2K. You know what I'm saying? He done already told us a hundred thousand times that B2K was dicking each other down. You know what I'm saying? Orlando done already told us, you know, him and Bow Wow was doing a little something, something back in the day, allegedly. You know, I don't believe him because Orlando crazy as hell. But even the fact that a, a straight man would, would say that another man has some good pussy, you're gay. Um, and just all the or flamboyant Orlando shit Orlando do, baby. We know you, we know at some point in your life you done took a dick. You know, you got all the gay men. Then you got Prince over here queening it out. It ain't no straight man on this show. Let's just call it what it is, baby. I'm going to just lay it all out on the line, sister. I'm tired of pretending with y'all motherfuckers. I'm tired of acting like I can't see what I actually see. Because I don't want to be the gay. I don't want to be that gay guy. You know, every time a gay guy point out the obvious, y'all try to call us messy. You know, even though, bitch, everybody can see it. It's just a lot of women who want to believe Prince is straight because y'all want to believe and still fantasize that maybe y'all might have a chance. Baby, that man like dick. That man like dick and balls and booty hole. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Sorry. You know, I'm sorry. But that's that's really what it's giving, sis. Y'all can let them hopes go. This man got uh some fake, you know, girlfriend that we ain't never seen or never heard from. It's really giving Amber and uh, what's his name? Sir Brock. 
what's his name? Brock from Miles from 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 Love and Hip Hop LA. You know the one that was with Milan, and he was acting like that girl was his 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 girlfriend, and he had to come out to her on the show. Meanwhile, they they had fucked way back like twenty years ago, and they was best friends, and he had her come on that show to play a role. So that's kind of what I feel like Prince did with that girl. He he brought to that reunion. Um, in Miami with the Love and Hip Hop Miami and said that was his girlfriend and she was pregnant and all that stuff. I kind of feel like that's what it is because we ain't never seen y'all out in public, seen y'all together, none of that shit. It's giving fake couple. It's giving that you, uh, y'all, she's your beard. You know, and, um, I for one am tired. I for one am tired of looking the other way with this gay ass shit. Y'all gay. All y'all niggas is gay. Mo City, you a sissy. Uh, Prince, you a sissy. And that's just what the fuck it's gonna be. I'm sorry. And that's just my opinion. This is all alleged information. None of this is factually based. This is just going off my opinion. But I've been around the block quite a few times. I'm 28 years old. Okay? My body count is pretty high. I didn't think I didn't think I didn't think it all when it comes to DL men. I didn't think it all. I didn't think the married ones. I didn't think the gym ones that try to fuck in the shower. You know, I didn't think the ones that come to the sex parties and you know get phone calls from their wife and gotta step outside. I didn't think the ones that'll pull up and uh you know, fuck in the driveway, you know, uh, get bent over in the driveway with the, with the tinted windows. You know, I done seen it all, baby. I done seen the ones that play like you, they best friend. And then when y'all get along, they want to suck your dick. I done seen the ones, you know what I'm saying? All of them, every kind of flavor or brand of download nigga, I done seen it. Prince and my city, they fit the mold. I'm sorry to tell y'all. I don't know, but it's weird. It's weird. It is weird. And it's weird for y'all. And it's weird for Prince because Prince tries so hard to distance himself from gay people. He always trying to do damage control like this random. Oh, see, I wasn't even going to talk about this, but let's talk about it since we motherfucking here. Prince then went on this whole little tour like he do every time he goes on reality TV, trying to convince the world that he's still straight. You know, exposing Mariah Lynn, talking about he fucked Mariah Lynn. Why are you even bringing Mariah Lynn's name up? Who does that? What dude walks around telling on a dick like that? That is so childish, so corny, and it is so indicative of a down low man. You know, when you got off this show, you knew what you was doing on this show. You knew what you and Durelli was doing. You knew how y'all was. You knew how flirtatious y'all was on camera. You knew you was a, 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 a borderline pussy boy bottom on camera, and you wanted to do some damage control. Just like when you and Bobby Lights was doing all of that gay shit, and then y'all got on that reunion, and you brought that, that, that girl on there to act like she was your girlfriend. And then you went and denounced Bobby and said y'all wasn't even friends no more. And you did all of that after that club scene where he checked you about talking to that girl in his face because you knew you weren't supposed to be talking to no bitches while your bitch was around. So, um... Yeah, you done went on this this podcast now, you know what I'm saying, calling Durelli messy, calling gays messy, trying to distance yourself from the gay community. You done start out in Mariah Land, trying to get you some clout or get you some 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 believers by out in this girl that you done had sex with. Prince, we still don't believe you. You still a six foot three pussy boy bottom with a big ass booty. And you're going to die that. And, and, and I said this on a live before and I'm going to say it again because I'm irked right now. Um, Prince, stay in the closet. Stay in the closet. Die in the closet. We don't need no old ass gay sissies coming out the closet. You old enough. Prince, Prince is in his mid-30s. Baby, you could have marched for, for gay rights and all of this stuff. You ain't did none of that. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't with us shooting in the gym. Now that we got gay rights legalized, we got gay marriage and all of this stuff, now y'all old sissies want to be popping out the closet left and right. You know what I'm saying? Now that gay is cool and it's in and it's fun to have a gay best friend or be a straight man that's cool with a gay. Now you want to pop up with all of these gay best friends when you really is the gay best friend. I'm not feeling it. Keep your old ass in that closet on that hanger, okay? We don't need no old ass sissies coming out here fucking it up for the rest of the young queens because at the end of the day, what is you going to do at 35 anyway? You going to be the oldest bitch in the gay clubs. You know what I'm saying? Girl, you probably can't suck dick right, can't take dick right because you've been doing it behind closed doors for the last 20 years. Like, we don't need no old sissies coming out the closet. So, yeah, Prince, I like this for you. Stay in the closet, dicking down, you know, the, the, the girls on the, on, on the shows you come across, you know, and just keep it like that, Pooh. Just keep it like that, Pooh, because it, it's weird. You're weird. You are weird. If you ain't heard it from nobody else, Prince, here from Big Mouth. You weird as fuck. Uh... But that's all I got, baby. I ain't got nothing else to say about this show. This the episode was lame as fuck. No shade. It was lame as fuck. Cause I don't even watch the shit. But um, that was just a few things that stood out to me. All this gay shit going on on this show that we keep overlooking and looking the other way and looking up under the rugs and around. Her. Bitch, can't go over it. Can't go under it. Got to go through it, sissy. But all right. I'll talk to y'all later, baby. Bye.